Hello and welcome. Congratulations, you have successfully completed all the essential theory sections for what to wake embedding. Now it's the time for our implementations. Here uh, I'm creating a new Jupyter notebook with Python 3 version. So let's give a good name to it. I'm naming it as uh, board vector with board to make. The first cell itself, we are going to load the dependencies. Let's import uh, our first and one of the most important uh, module uh, that is NLTK, Natural Language Toolkit. If you don't have it, you can install it first, then you can import it here. So the import is done. Uh, from NLTK Toolkit itself, uh, we have a couple of very important uh, methods uh, or modules are there those are primarily uh, tokenizer that is word tokenizer and sentence tokenizer i'm going to uh, import them as well from nltk import word okay word tokenize and let me call sentence tokenize these two basically word tokenize and sentence tokenize uh, can be used to split any document into different system uh, sentence and for each sentence can be splitted uh, into different words i will show you how the output looks like later uh, but before that let me finish this import section I'm going to call uh, the <clears throat> another package here that is called Gensim. Gensim is the uh, model provider in this particular case. We are going to the we are going to use that what to wake model from the Gensim package. You can install it uh, if you don't have it already installed in your system. I should have it okay. so and the couple of things we are going to import uh, uh, from ginseng uh, model it should be what to wake Let me check it first, whether it is there or not. Okay. It should be modules. All right, this was easy. Okay, so why I'm using GenSim, I, I will explain uh, later phase. And, and uh, <clears throat> let me import another very important uh, package here. Uh, that is Disney. From sk learn dot manifold, it should be manifold import Disney. Let me import pandas as well. All right, so uh, this Disney is uh, is a non-linear dimensionality reduction methods uh, it stands for t distributions t distributed stochastic neighbor embedding so if you are familiar with dimensionality reduction like uh, pca and other kind of uh, things pca is basically linear dimensionality reduction method and disney is a non-linear method 
so as i already told you that we are going to uh, represent those what to those words using this what to wake model in a very high dimensional vector space that may be 64 or maybe more than that so disney will help us to reduce the dimension view from 64 to two or three dimensions so that we can do a quick visualizations for our own understanding point of view okay so for that visualization uh, uh, for that visualization work we are going to import another uh, font package that is bokeh Okay, let me import to the bokeh mode first. Uh, come first. Output file, output notebook. Okay, I'm not going to save it anywhere. So I'm, I'm going to display it in this notebook itself. So that's why I'm calling output notebook. If you are not familiar with the bokeh functionality, you can have a uh, uh, quick demo somewhere or you can search it a uh, little bit, but uh, whatever required in this particular Notebook I will I will explain so so that you can have something ready with you Let me import the plotting Plotting import So and I'm going to use matplotmagic function here all right all right so my import uh, went fine so I was able to import everything properly okay so next step is that uh, we have to download uh, one of the punctuation uh, data set basically and uh, for that uh, nltk will provide one download option tk dot so one of the german uh, dictionary company i believe they created this uh, repository KD. I hope it should work. Yeah, it's 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 it was fine. All right. Now uh, we have to download the data set which we are going to work on. So in this particular case, we I, I thought of using two data set. One is uh, Gutenberg uh, uh, libraries uh, data set, and another was uh, one of the news feed. Okay, and. Uh, so let's try it with the uh, Gutenberg data set first. First of all, we have to download the data. Okay, let's do that. NTK dot download. Okay, all right. So it may take some time depending on your internet speed, but it was very fast for me. No. Now what we have to do, we have to import Gutenberg from uh, nltk dot compose import. So basically we have loaded the data in our memories. Now let's have a quick look into the data set which we are going to work on. Okay. So for that Gutenberg provides lots of ready-made functions for our analysis. And uh, what we can do, we can check. There should be something called field uh, file edition file IDs and it should show okay this many files are there inside this Gutenberg data sets one two three four five around we can check the length also how many files are there 
Okay, so we have total 18 corpus with us and we are going to use everything together and so that we'll have little bit of uh, bigger amount of uh, training data. Now, uh, let me show you what is the function for this sentence tokenizer and the word tokenizer. Okay, so here what I'm going to do, I'm going to tokenize the it will give me everything I was not intending to do that but uh, click it okay I don't need to see all these sort of things let me see first one second one in fact okay this is how it is going to pick up each and every sentence this is one sentence the function of this uh, sentence organizer is to split this whole corpus into each individual sentence and it, while splitting that each individual sentence, it is going to use this uh, punctuation data set to understand uh, sentence terminations and other sort of things. Okay, similar to these, uh, if we want to use word tokenizer, this is what we are going to do. We are going to get, let's see how, what we get each and every words of this sentence should be splitted. She was the youngest, okay? And this way, till the uh, end of this sentence, everything would be splitted. Oh, let me make it full screen, I don't know. All right. So, what we're going to do next, we are, going to create our model okay. uh, we have two options the input the what to bake model will take input as a uh, uh, word tokenized sentence so either we can use this sentence tokenizer and then word tokenizer to tokenize each and every uh, words in every sentence in this whole document or we can use the ready-made functions available with the Gutenberg dataset itself. Uh, they also provide some sentence tokenizer. Uh, let me get some random hundred. Okay, so they already have them sent sentence tokenizer which does all this work, whatever we try to do using these individual functions. So I'm going to use that particular functionality to create our required data sheet for our model training. To do that, what we're going to do, I'm going to save this data into some variable so let's term the variable as uh, input data into using it as input data so if you want to check it uh, another important thing we should check it I, sh I should have uh, showed this thing before uh, this particular step how many words we have and I don't know whether this is a function or it is coming okay we have nearly 2.6 million words inside these uh, whole corpus of 18 18 uh, different documents so we already have tokenized our each and every sentence into these uh, input data 
now we are going to use it for our what to wake model so let's uh, give a good name to it execute what to wake model all right so i'm creating one model model equal to what to wake the first thing it will ask it is should be sentence okay so we have this input data as sentence I'm not going to use any kind of filter on this data uh, but uh, ideally you can later when you will understand everything you can apply some kind of stop word filtering mechanism so that you can reduce the most frequent words from this list and that will help like these a uh, of his and this similar sort of thing seen those are very frequent words and uh, you can remove them that will reduce number of a good um, good number of uh, words from our document along with um, the other non frequent words will also get little more priority all right so next parameter which we are going to give is the size of our time the our, our dimensions uh, vector space dimensions that should be size all right so we are going to uh, represent the words in a 64 dimensional vector space so this size parameter will decide that particular factor now we are going to create this what to wake model for skip gram there should be another parameter is skip gram indicator i'm giving it one that means our model will create a skip gram model window size is the size which we normally consider the left side and the right hand side of our target word to uh, find the context word so here we are picking a window size of 10 we are going to filter uh, some of the very uh, very rare words which happens like less than 5 or 10 or some numbers we can pick uh, that is minimum count something okay so I, i'm going to uh, remove all the words which has uh, frequency less than five some random state uh, random seed we can decide also uh, let me decide one to three you can pick your favorite 42 in this case and you can decide uh, the number of uh, cpus you want to dedicate for this modeling the model is executing now it may take some time all right while the model is uh, executing we can discuss few of the things like why we selected this uh, gensim what to wake model gensim what to wake uh, provides some of the very uh, ready made functions or methods along with this model which would be helpful for us to show uh, all the things whatever we discussed during our theory class that means the simple arithmetic operations and uh, the predictions like to find out uh, the similar words or uh, the context context words and all sort of things i will show you they they already have created some kind of functions like similarity similar words uh, doesn't match and uh, similar sort of things i will i will have a quick demo on, on that so uh, let's wait for this model to get trained first and then I will, I will continue all right <clears throat> the model has uh, uh, it has completed uh, its training process uh, now what I'm going to do we are going to 
I'm going to explode the model. To break model. All right. So let's see. And I wanted to show the vocabulary size. Uh, yeah. All right, so our vocabulary has 17,000 different words. Okay. And uh, what we can do, first thing we, we can try to find out that is the words which resides within a close proximity of some some of the words which we are going to select so to find that what we can do we have to go inside word vector and we can pick most similar Okay, here you can give the uh, <clears throat> actual word for which you want to find the similar words or uh, the words around. Okay, uh, for example, suppose I'm expecting like think, idea, and similar sort of things. Let's see what goes. Okay, I got think. Okay recollect okay definitely those are relevant word uh, some of them are coming from few of the stories and dramas here and there imagine is also there okay those are definitely relevant words so let's uh, have this example for something else also uh, for example like this is uh, i don't know why people prefer to search for dog also let me also try to see how my model functions Oh, good. Uh, puppy is there. Okay. So definitely it is uh, it is uh, picking up the closely related words here and there. Okay. So. Uh, another thing we can try is uh, kind of name of the month or something like that. Uh, let's uh, let's try it for day and night okay okay so I, I searched for day it gave me night morning month evening so all the calendar related sort of things is coming here okay similar to these I want to another uh, called January let's see if, okay the word is not there okay so I search for January and similar words which it gave November, October, December, August, June. Definitely those are name of the month and completely related to the calendars. So this is functioning like it is going to, it is picking up all the contained whatever available within the close proximity of this word which we are pro providing inside this most similar functions. And uh, this is what I was talking about this ready-made function most similar. Similar to these, we have many, uh, many other ready-made functions also. Let me try another thing. That is called uh, odd man out. Okay, doesn't match. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass a string. November. August Sunday okay split
All right, in this particular case, you can see November and August are the name of the month and Sunday is uh, day. So that's why this is giving me uh, doesn't match. That means this is, uh, this is, this particular thing is not belonging here. So if I give another thing, let's see what, what it gives. All right, it still doesn't give me Sunday. Uh, right, love sign in Sunday. Right, you can you can play with this thing, and uh, if you get anything uh, good example here, you can definitely uh, try that. So next thing, what what I'm going to uh, show is the something called similarity, the the kind of relationship two words has. Okay. So that is similarity. All right. So similarity between two words. Here, what I'm going to use father and mother. So we have a similarity of eighty-five, almost eighty-six percent. Now, if I see. Queen, we have 50% similarity. Similar to that, King, we have 52% similarity. But father and mother has a good big similarity. Okay, and relationship between father and King is uh, basically King is much closer to father than a Queen. Uh, Sorry, father is much closer to a king than a queen. All right, so let's see the another similarity here. All right, okay, this is what we already have seen. Okay, the relationship between king and queen is 65%. We can jump into our next sections that is uh, that is simple arithmetic all right so you know what I am going to try here uh, because that example I, I have given many times during our theoretical discussions um, we're going to use most similar and it will it has several parameters out of them one is positive it will take a list of uh, sort of things uh, but let me change the example here okay son negative man plus Woman. Okay, what I'm doing here, son minus man plus woman. So what do you expect? We, I'm expecting daughter and similar words. So let's see what our model says. Uh, all right. It, it is saying wife, uh, but uh, the daughter is also there. Okay, in the very close uh, to that reason. So if I, I'm, I'm sure if we train this model with a little more data, it is going to bring this particular content top of everything. At least uh, we can see it in the first 10 or first uh, 10 words. Yeah, you, can, you can play with this thing with the many other examples. Just one thing makes sure that uh, if the word is not there in the vocabulary, uh, you are going to get the error. So depending on that, you can change your uh, what you call it, you can change your uh, wordings little bit to get uh, the available words only. All right, next section is what I'm going to do. I'm going to plot the uh, word vectors in a lower dimensions. Okay, so uh, uh, in this particular case, I'm going to use that uh, 
this knee that is t distributed t distribution stochastic gradient or t distributed stochastic neighbor embedding okay that uh, non-linear dimensionality reduction methods i'm going to use it so let's see how it works Okay, so first of all, what I have to do, I have to pick all the uh, boards into some of the variable that is model. Uh, all right, model dot board vector dot board color. Okay, so. All right, so uh, this is a version issue, like old version, it used to work with this model function. One thing I forgot to show you, uh, let's see like uh, these 64 dimensions, whatever we have represented. Let me bring it to the top of everything, okay? For any particular word like that the data is being represented in 64 dimension. This is the 64 dimension values like X, Y, Z, and uh, blah blah blah, and all sort of things. Still, 60, 64 different dimensions. Okay, our this thing will reduce all the 64 dimensions to a two dimensions. I you can also try with the different available three dimensional modeling uh, or graph. But uh, in this particular class, I'm going to use a two-dimension uh, version of the Disney dimensionality reduction. All right, so uh, I have stored all the vocabulary and uh, the word vectors inside these uh, x variable. So now I'm going to create the Disney model. Disney equal to create the model first uh, it will ask for number of components number of components okay I'm going to use it for two dimensions so I'm using two so another important thing is that it's a uh, number of iterations uh, you need to have a big good number of iterations to reduce everything to two dimensions uh, you can try it with 1000 or 2000. It is going to take a bit longer time uh, But I'm for cut short. I'm using the lowest number of iteration that is 250 and uh, Okay That's all uh, from model creation point of view now I'm going to fit and transform this model and going to save the content in some 2d data it's not wd it's 2d uh, dot fit and transform all right so with the with the data x this particular stave is going to ex run for a very long time okay maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes depending on their your uh, system performance okay so i'm submitting it and uh, then i will continue once we are done with these uh, two dimensional conversions okay dimension uh, Disney model is uh, running in the meantime what I, I can do I can uh, create one data frame to hold uh, the data from these uh, these X underscore 2d uh, variable or array 
So let me uh, create the data frame and let's wait for uh, this uh, Disney model to complete its training. Okay, I'm creating one uh, data frame. I'm giving it a word vector data frame equal to ponders data frame x 2d and columns equal to unit name x and y So I'm going to add create another column as well that is um, something called token basically the word itself I'm going to store it one vector vocab keys Okay, uh, let's wait for this model to be trained first and then I will continue with the next step. It's taking a very long time. Okay, so uh, our 2D model version is ready okay 
so let, let's execute our next step all right so the, what vector data frame contains some data let's have a look okay so this is the content all right all four chunks details are there this happy comfortable all these uh, good words are here yeah, so saving some space let's make it whatever it was now it's the time to plot this data uh, into interactive <coughs> let's have a scattered plot x Y fix size all right should work if it is not working I need to find out why Marcos well, you can find you can give your own marker here give the size and little bit of basically okay it's not well optimized can see this data is uh, <coughs> scattered scattered plot was created and it's been uh, you can see a nice uh, scattered for plot was created here and uh, all those data were distributed depending on their clustering and their relationship with the other words okay so next thing what we are going to do i'm sure there are, there are hundreds of different way to optimize this particular uh, graph so i'm not spending any time to do that wanted to show you as quickly as possible okay. Let's have a bouquet plot now. Okay, but in this case, I'm not going to pick up 50 words. I will pick up uh, around 10,000 sample. Okay. Sub word vector data frame. Word vector data frame dot. sample <coughs> n equal to uh, let's make a uh, 50% okay 7500 approximately so for subset uh, is created let me create a figure and uh, log Alright, it, it worked. So 
little bit of messy. Okay. Now, the dot. I'm going to write down the text directly in this scattered plot itself. It's equal to uh, subplot dot x y equal to y and text equal to okay. Give the name token that should be sufficient. Let me try. Yes, it was sufficient. I hope it should work. Okay, uh, okay. Let me try one quick thing. Okay. Okay, so this is an interactive plot we have for the same thing whatever we had here. Uh, now we can look into the data content as well. For example, if we zoom into this section, okay, let's uh, pick up this box. This one, okay, we can see all the numbers. Are present in this particular section okay let's go back to some other section uh, let's pick this content okay uh, it looks like different characters uh, are present here so So in this way, uh, the words are distributed in a two-dimensional uh, vector space and uh, we can try to find out like if we get any cluster, known cluster where we can recognize each and every word uh, has a similar word. Okay, uh, trying to find it out, I didn't see any clear uh, Okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm sure that if you, if you give enough training and enough data set, you are going to get a very get a very close, good cluster of uh, known words. Most of the words are unknown, uh, like other than few sort of here, whatever we have. But uh, the theme what I wanted to present is to uh, distribute uh, the data in a higher dimensional space then reduce the dimensionality to bring it to our acceptable dimension like 2D or 3D and then visualize those uh, 2D representations in this scattered plot format so that we can do further analysis or further examinations on uh, those word relationship. Okay. So I hope you have enjoyed uh, these uh, these sections. But if you if you have any questions, you can slow down the video, or you can just uh, leave some comments, and I will definitely personally clarify all the doubts you have in this uh, case. But uh, yeah, that's all. And uh, I I was thinking to try with another data set, but uh, that would be kind of very similar uh, presentation. So I I'm going to skip it for now. So that I can continue with the next sections. Next sections, we are going to uh, perform some kind of sentiment analysis on one of the available natural language processing data data set. And uh, this content, whatever you have understood here, that what to make representations of those data in high dimension space. I'm going to use these values, like in this particular case, these values as input in one of the neural network hidden layer and then further neural network uh, layers would be added on top of it so that we can utilize these high
higher dimensional vector space uh, or these higher dimensional values and we can conclude or decide something uh, like sentiments and document classifications okay so this is the first step of the learning we are we are distributing the content the data in a higher dimension space and i'm going to do a sentiment analysis coding sections immediately after this so there we are going to leverage these uh, whole understanding and we're going to take it one step ahead to utilize these uh, word vector representations in a different way okay so see you there